everyone. Are you able to join? Yeah. I think Hello, so. Chase. Can you hear me okay? Okay, yeah. good yeah. stuff. Thank you for having me. And Yvonne, yeah. thank you for the help getting set up. Yeah, thank you. So you are uh, right from Silicon Valley, uh, right? Thank you for the time zone. Uh, let's say we found a way to manage time zones, right? Uh, yes. uh, there, uh, we had we had a lot of great speakers, and uh, I think nobody expects less from you to, to be to be great. Uh, no pressure, of course. Uh, and you will share with us scaling platform growth and value generation campaigns, right? So you are managing a director at the and the platform for the platform strategy at Silicon Valley Bank. And I let uh, ask you, please, are you able to share your screen with us so we can see? Yeah, I will do it right now here. So uh, sharing screen. Your slides. And uh, we will go for 25 minutes of uh, your story, uh, what you want to share with us. And, and we have the time, some questions. Okay, perfect. sounds good. Can you see my screen OK? Presentation? Yep. Everything is perfect. OK, wonderful. So. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity, and uh, yeah, it was great catching last presentation. And at Silicon Valley Bank, uh, open finance is what we are all about these days. And I'm going to give a talk just to share a little bit of uh, call it practical, hands-on experience. Uh, I've been working on APIs at the bank now for ten years. Uh, I was the first API product manager at a bank that caters to fintech startups uh, and uh, other growth companies. And uh, over the last decade, uh, I've had a chance to work with some amazing founders and really uh, apply uh, some techniques to uh, grow uh, our business through APIs and integration. And we aren't the largest bank in the United States. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I had to kind of build with, uh, say, less than a, a kind of a, a major bank budget and have some techniques and stories I'll share around that. So, um, so first, uh, I'll cover just a little bit about Silicon Valley Bank because I think the reason I'm here and the reason why I have a story is because of where I work. And I'll, I'll tell you guys a little bit around the Silicon Valley Bank story and where we play. Uh, I'll share a little around our current state of play uh, with uh, open finance over the last uh, decade and as well as where we are with open banking. And also uh, share some stories on how uh, I like to apply a technique called integration arbitrage. Simply put, uh, I wanna work better with my clients than other banks do and have compatibility with the prevailing apps uh, that my clients are using. And also I'll share some stories around what I call a value generation campaign. Uh, it's a little bit of how to pound the pavement to get out there and actually um, get people using your APIs, partners powering your APIs, things of that nature. So we've got some great uh, uh, platforms out there and I've had a chance to talk to a couple of the attendees actually. So um, first, Silicon Valley Bank, uh, I'll be brief here, but you know it's important because uh, where we sit in the economy is we are right kind of at the intersection of innovation and where venture capitalists invest in these companies. And we're privileged to have, I think it's 78% of the uh, FinTech uh, top 50, according to Forbes. And so we have uh, kind of an open finance play already where we're already connecting uh, private investors, venture capitalists, private equity firms, and uh, angels in Silicon Valley and other uh, uh, innovation hubs with the next up and coming uh, startups uh, that are um, looking to raise money. And our specialty is loaning to those companies when other banks uh, cannot. So. Uh, for more SV, for more information, SV, just check out our website and uh, roll in here. So, I guess you know I'm going to borrow a technique, uh, just kind of give you guys some acronyms to remember, uh, just uh, uh, as I go through. And I think I might have been hungry when I was making this particular acronym, so we'll call it ISOP, the Integration State of Play. Uh, I think I was thinking of pancakes. I just made pancakes for my kids when I was doing my slides over the weekends uh, here. So, uh, so where are we in our innovation story with uh, APIs? Uh, I'd like to time travel back a decade or so and just kind of start with the fact that we had nothing. And a decade ago, we kind of recognized that our accountants uh, really needed a better experience with our platform. And, um, you know, my job was to pitch the executives, uh, help me build APIs to do that. And so it was our first time breaking the ice on an older uh, uh, API. The Open Financial Exchange has been around for 23 years. And so I was aiming at accountants and in order to reach them, uh, built out this uh, OFX infrastructure and we've managed to get roughly 8,000 clients on it today. And we've got about a dozen partners uh, that use that. About six years ago, I had the chance to um, kind of connect with some local Silicon Valley companies, look at which platform would be best for SVB and then kind of make the uh, commit by a proper gateway. And we built out some FinTech APIs. We actually have to be hired a startup to help us do that and built off of some internal uh, wisdom and experience we had and more recently built out uh, an onboarding API to kind of bring clients in more quickly, uh, had some great success. And there's a, a little graph later on to kind of show you where some of these uh, uh, 
uh, new companies have come from uh, through this onboarding API. And interesting data point is we actually uh, custom built it as well to use for our UK uh, office so we could open accounts uh, more quickly uh, in the UK. Uh, talk a little around PSD2 and open banking. I think that's really been uh, a way the doors have opened up to the world on purveying all of our financial services out to a broader set of distribution uh, distributors uh, in this way. So I look at TPPs as potential partners, and I'll share a little bit around some of the stories uh, in that area. Uh, I like to think of it as, um, you know, we're trying to embed our experience. What is Silicon Valley Bank and the products we offer uh, embedding those where our clients already are. So whether that's, um, you know, the major accounting applications, the uh, major ERP systems, treasury management systems, or uh, also inserting our uh, banking functions somewhere within the financial operations stack with, uh, within our clients and uh, just looking for traction, looking for uh, connectivity and current flow there. Uh, I think it's always good to take a, a, an investor mindset when you think of uh, where to spend your API and your integration uh, dollars. Uh, I'm a bit of an entrepreneur at SVB. I have to kind of go and ask for funding and uh, deliver and keep that as a virtuous cycle myself. And so I'm always looking at how do I lower my bank's cost of acquisition and looking at the long-term value of those clients as well. And we are starting to look more intensely into um, the, uh, just call it adjacencies around Silicon Valley Bank. So we're privileged in that the people we cater to are technology founders and CTOs and uh, people building platforms. And we're looking at how we better serve those people with wealth management services. So more of a, a private banking function and more recently with um, a, a partnership uh, with uh, insurance. So we've got a, an insurance partner uh, called Vouch. And if you want more information about that, just check our website. Uh, it, it's a bit in the U.S., um, much like I, I cut the, the tail end of this conversation about Switzerland and some of the ways that the uh, industry is, is moving there. In the United States, we go back to the I think it's the 30s with the Glass-Steagall Act, where they put separation between the different uh, parts of the financial economy um, to uh, protect uh, Americans uh, from having too much span of control for financial services. And I think what's happened with uh, open banking and more recently some of these uh, American-based uh, 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 open concepts like the uh, OFX and FDX and other bits is that we open our doors as well. And I think it's in a way we're following Europeans in being more open uh, with the economy in the United States. And so I think uh, just in terms of Anaxi's uh, way of looking at things, uh, I think the products you have uh, and how you uh, distribute those through partners um, to increase your reach to the actual users and companies that are your clients is uh, just a, a vital way to kind of spread and uh, generate value. And uh, APIs are an amazing way to do that since they're efficient and uh, banks uh, have been doing uh, that kind of thing since uh, passing notes of credit around at the champagne fairs, uh, you know, flinging files from mainframe to mainframe and now with REST APIs and open banking. So uh, I like to borrow just uh, uh, you know phrase from a favorite movie, but uh, Temenoske, knowing yourself and knowing your uh, your own uh, niche in the in the economy. And I think uh, we are a bank that caters to startups. We're privileged in that position, and so uh, you have to know yourself in order to better purvey your value out to these uh, distribution networks. And I think um, maybe it's a function of being uh, some of a math teacher, but uh, I, I like to think in equations. And so just uh, uh, the idea of uh, Set up your measures. How will you track your success? So as an, a an API manager, uh, trying to identify how many clients will you bring in? How will you do that? What are the critical factors you'll need to do that? How will you track it? Uh, what will be your objective key results? These are all things you need to create your own kind of virtual cycle internally and externally where you get kind of a track record of success and you just continue to launch uh, products that people adopt. And, um, you know, just think hard about what's in your equation. Uh, that's going to vary from fintech to banker to uh, other industries as well. But understanding the math behind your uh, uh, methods, I think, will uh, guide you and just help you get an ROI on your time. Uh, I think that what we've done here at SVB is we really look broadly uh, across the world and said, you know, we know where we have strengths, these innovation centers in, in you know, the Valley, New York, Boston, uh, internationally in London, Israel and uh, Canada and uh, now more in Latin America. And so what we did was we kind of looked around and said, well, how do we better reach, say, the developer constituents, uh, those that are uh, building platforms, the APIs? trying to get more uh, more processing up more quickly. And kind of doing a scan in the market, we, uh, we kind of reached out and um, we set up a partnership with a few companies uh, around how to grow our uh, our funnel externally. And we capitalized on one, and just to show you just, you know, the, the color coding on the slide there is where you see some great concentrations uh, in India, and uh, I think it's down in Chile, and then Sweden, some of the Scandinavian countries. 
uh, Australia as well, just saw a, a great inflow of companies that uh, we didn't have a strong presence in those places initially. And uh, it was great to kind of open our doors up. And I like to say that um, in this spirit of kind of knowing yourself and knowing your company, uh, it's helpful to do what I call an honest strength, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threat analysis. So looking at things and uh, just being honest with where you need to be better, um, you can't be good at everything. And so I think finding partners that are great in domains where you're not, that is kind of where uh, you'll get the best bang for your buck. And it's where really you can spend time and actually um, kind of uh, develop new uh, ways of reaching new markets and ultimately kind of um, expanding your digital territory. I mean, it sounds like a game of risk or uh, some kind of conquer the world strategy, but it's not. It's more just how do you be efficient with your time and cover off the different markets where your clients are. So uh, the graphic to the right is my own homemade uh, indication of how to vote. So we just voted in California. And so I thought it was great to just remind people that voting is an important civil right. But uh, I, I like to use it as value other time, value others' time and energy. And I think that groups like this, what Mady's brought together with uh, API Days, with what I think, um, what the Open Financial Exchange and now, um, you know, Dinesh Katyal and the folks at Financial Data Exchange, uh, the great work that went into open banking uh, to actually build a standard that people have implemented to have fintechs and banks play together nicely. I think that's uh, some amazing work done by so many. And I think that um, as a, you know, API uh, a product manager and evangelist, getting out there and looking at these communities of excellence and just, you know, being authentic, uh, getting in there and trying to be additive, uh, you know, adding energy to um, to the system. Uh, it's hard uh, to take time away from your day job uh, and uh, uh, kind of get out there and invest time and commit with these um, other uh, different companies. And I think um, finding the right communities and looking around the market for, um, again, I really enjoyed the prior speaker and it's, it's kind of what I call getting, you know, qualified and quality references uh, people you can connect with that are in the same space as you and just jumping in and participating. And I think, uh, you, you know, I like to take the approach of trying to be like the United Nations in some cases. And as a bank that caters to many of these uh, amazing fintech companies on the rise, we're trying to, um, you, you know, uh, work with them. But in some cases, we are actually competing with them. So it's a it's a word that, uh, you know, a friend of mine at Intuit uh, coined, uh, you know, at least I heard it first from him, but cooperation. Uh, the idea is kind of uh, a fair form of cooperative comp competition where you just kind of uh, try to make uh, wins together, but recognizing the fact that you can't always uh, be uh, gaining at someone else's expense, but try to grow the system and uh, create more, uh, create a bigger pie rather than just taking someone else's pie. I think that uh, key to that is, again, this idea of seeking consensus momentum uh, and just trying to find clever acronyms to help people remember things. But Como, uh, maybe it's Perry Como, favorite singer. But uh, or causing a commotion in the market, whatever helps you uh, remember things. But I think that uh, when you're in these discussions, uh, these consortiums, uh, these open working groups, uh, I think it's uh, vital to um, uh, realize that people aren't always going to agree. They're just entrenched, inherent positions. Uh, you have people that are scaling and growing and trying to take, uh, uh, they need market share from incumbents in some cases. So there's going to be some tension, but I think that you can conduct yourself in a way that's, uh, you know, ambassadorial and thinking in ways of how what you do, uh, what you commit your company to doing, and how you engage with others. The idea of catalyzing uh, reaction, so trying to put in, um, you know, uh, the right value of time and money, and causing positive outcomes is uh, is where you should drive and try to avoid throwaway. So again, a lot of these convergences on standards, I think uh, that's been really fruitful for the world to save a lot of needless rework a lot of one-to-one -one integrations back and forth, where if you just commit to the standard and build to it, then uh, it makes the whole system more interoperable. And so I think bringing it all together, uh, and again, uh, thinking of this in terms of uh, chemistry and how different parties uh, interact, uh, I think that um, uh, there are names on these uh, companies, uh, you know, on the version that I have internally, but the idea is that if you're going to commit to um, get out in the market and, um, uh, seeking an integration and building this distribution network. A large part of it comes from understanding kind of what's at your uh, nucleus. You know, what are these things at the center? So the idea here is that with PSD2 and open banking, uh, it's provided a standardized way of presenting the bank's ledger. Uh, and there are a lot of great new companies that are finding better ways to distribute ledgers uh, in, in new ways that the conventional banks uh, were looking at a, a, very, a lot of interest. In some cases, we're partnering with them. And uh, in some cases, it's just a more efficient way to uh, have value shift over uh, uh, more quickly. 
Uh, I think that the open banking ecosystem now with uh, open account information, it's really built off uh, decades of desire, not just in Europe, but also in the United States, where um, the U.S. Treasury acknowledged a few years back in some uh, some court cases uh, where a couple major fintech aggregators uh, were seeking uh, kind of the court's ruling and U.S. Treasury's permission to um, kind of codify this concept of informed consent. So user consents to give their data to their specified fintech provider. And so I think it benefited a lot of the companies in the United States, a lot of these data aggregation platforms to have that kind of come out from Treasury in the United States to validate that, that point of view. Uh, I think that um, it borrows from the European privacy model where the, you know, it's, it's habeas data. I own the data about myself. If I want that data to go over to a third party application because I prefer that experience, I think that that mode of um, controlled consent uh, is is definitely where um, open finance has been uh, uh, just a, uh, a catalyst for uh, opening up innovation more broadly. I think the um, the evolution into um, payments, uh, you know, checking how much money is in account beforehand and then uh, pushing payments in a secure way. All the work that, you know, uh, open banking started on uh, doing some own their own kind of call it proprietary security. But I think the adoption of FAPI and read write standard as a, as a kind of global spec led by, you know, IETF and OIDC and the different uh, groups that have come together. I think that's really laid out the secure uh, foundation that the pipes that we can all trust. And I think what will happen now is I think there'll be some advances in privacy uh, here on the ballot in California. There was a vote uh, to kind of sustain the California Privacy Act, the CCPA, uh, that gives users a lot more control over who accesses their data. Uh, can that data be used for what purposes? Can it be uh, deleted when I'm done and I want to be forgotten? A lot of these European concepts are coming now uh, hard into California as uh, uh, as law. And I think that there may be a room for a you know national law of something like that uh, down the road. It's a trend, obviously, with privacy and users' preferences traveling with them. I think that um, there's going to be more uh, kind of opening up of the ledger and more uh, partnerships with different uh, parts of the financial system uh, as um, we all find intelligent ways to share data that give the client value. You know, it has to always, I think, be put in that lens where if the client has a defined value uh, and they can see that value and they can control their data, I think those are the combinations of things that will drive creating new products and uh, having things that are more dynamically priced and having just a, you know, a more efficient financial system as people come in and optimize the clunky parts of it or the areas that have been, um, you know, slower to implement uh, APIs and things of that nature uh, there. And I, I come back to the concept of um, we're all out here. Uh, we're at uh, uh, we're at a conference talking about APIs and we're all fintech and, and banking folks are building around the ecosystem they're in. And I think that it pays to be, um, you know, diplomatic and negotiate with your uh, your, your colleagues. Uh, again, you can't always get what you want, but I think that uh, in a lot of these one to one and, and one to many groups where you can get together and look at how to create value, uh, it's really trying to find, uh, you, you know, the win win opportunities and looking at how you can grow your market through distribution partnerships and uh, landing on the right way to do that in a, a structured and controlled way. And I think also, um, you know, I think it takes uh, it just takes some concentration to look at things in, uh, you know, kind of a chemical mindset where you're adding to different parts and maybe you have that missing component that will make something uh, just magical and work better. Uh, maybe you're seeking something that you lack and finding that partner that can help you activate it. I think it's uh, it's always a continuous hunt for who's doing something better and who has, uh, you know, great ideas that you can uh, learn from and also uh, implement at your own institution or company. So um, that's really kind of uh, uh, the end of my uh, points of view on on this. And I thought I'd open up now for uh, for questions and uh, just ongoing discussion. Yeah. Hello, Jason. Hello again. Thank you very much uh, uh, for for this presentation. There is uh, one point that really uh, interested me, especially yeah. But when you say we are smaller than others, right? Uh, we are, uh, you know, you're already in what's next, as you state in your baseline. But you are smaller than others. So actually, how the API competition can be can be won when you are with a smaller player strategy? You say that you talk about developer experience, you know, being more integrable or or sexy in a sense uh, compared to others. Yeah, this is this is really what you're trying to do. Yeah, I think uh, I'm sorry, I'm creating infinite windows here. Uh, so maybe I will uh, just go to. Uh, you can stop sharing your screen. Yeah, pardon me for one second here. Okay, that's a bit better. So I don't stare into infinite windows. 
So I think the, uh, I guess the words maybe, you know, it's efficacy, like how do you uh, be uh, uh, concentrated with your time? And again, I like to borrow from kind of the venture capitalist mindset of you only have a finite amount of dollars to spend or in our cases, dollars to loan to companies. And so I always try to find those high yield partnerships. And so maybe it's just, it's more of a chemistry mindset of finding the right, uh, the right partners for the right time with what you've got. And, you know, I think that in, the, in the U.S., there's, you know, there are very, very large banks uh, and um, they've got a lot more money to spend and they can kind of play more, uh, more of the board more broadly. I think with us, uh, we're, uh, you know, we're in the top 40 institutions for sure. Uh, we're in the top 10 institutions when you look at ACH processing uh, within the, in the U.S. And that's because we have a massive book of business with fintech. So I think when we try to be, uh, we try to make the most of our dollars, but also look for, again, uh, having deep and uh, fulfilling partnerships is something that I've been working on for the last decade or so. And we layer in uh, what we are good at, which is relationships and also helping help, helping our uh, fintech partners and clients reach out into our network of whether that's investors into our network of clients. And um, I think that's that's part of how we do what we do. And we also have the luxury of, um, in many cases, their clients. You know, again, most of the Fortune uh, 50, uh, according to Forbes on the fintech list, are actual clients. And so I think when I come to events like yours, uh, I, I'm privileged to see that, hey, like, I know that client, I know that client, and, and they're, they're, they're a client of Silicon Valley Bank. And maybe they started very early on. Like there's some, you know, I've had uh, many breakfasts and lunches and dinners with uh, unicorn founders and uh, companies that uh, are well known. Uh, here that that you know it's a privilege uh, in my view. So I guess I, I would say that we layer in some relationship building and using our own uh, call it our own neural network of knowledge and investors and other angels and other fintech partnerships to try to find these um, uh, these groups where we can get together and uh, just um, you know like when I was picking my API platform for example, I had to um, look at uh, uh, two companies were being uh, sought out and uh, I decided to crowdsource the selection of that to bring in uh, about 30 FinTech developers and say, which one do you like better? And I think that really helped to kind of go to the clients. So we tap our network is another technique that I use too, Medi, is just the fact that I'm, again, privileged where I work and with the people I get to hang out with and the clients I serve ultimately is to try to build uh, a product they wanna use and they themselves are FinTech platforms. So in following and helping them, uh, it, it helps me build a better product. Yeah, having uh, lived uh, six years and built my company and sold it in in, in San Francisco, I, I totally understand what you talk about. You know the um, the uh, the ecosystem and and the privilege that we have to about talking to to people. And when your name is Silicon Valley Bank, people expect Silicon Valley, right? <laughs> you know, in 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 the API they see. We have a we have a question for, for from Duane actually about this topic. He said, "What industry or collaborative efforts do you follow to stay abreast or abreast, abreast right of most of the exciting exciting new developments?" Yeah, you know, I think it's it's uh, uh, it's prospecting. You know, like because there's so much information out there, um, and so there's great you know there's great sites around payments. There's great sites you know say around conferences like Finovate where it's industry themed. Uh, there's uh, kind of technology centric conferences uh, like you put together over the years. And I think that um, uh, it's kind of, I try to sample from uh, a broad range of topics. So I'll even check out things about the regulators. So I'll go look at like ACAMS, which is the American uh, kind of guild that looks after money laundering here uh, and uh, looking at aspects of risk. So staying current on cybersecurity and uh, data privacy as well. So it's kind of a, uh, a broad mixture of things. Uh, Sometimes it's a, it's a random uh, topic where I'll just want to learn more on something. So I think as an API purveyor, I think you have to have a, a very uh, eclectic set of knowledge to understand the different pieces, not just as an engineer, but also from a risk perspective. And um, I think, you know, some of the uh, the time spent with, with Dwayne actually, uh, you know, looking at algorithms and the ways that uh, you can intelligently apply, you know, Python and data science to solve problems. Uh, you know, I think I try to look at uh, the, the dominant schools like Stanford and MIT checking out their programs. Uh, you know, our head of innovation brought in the Stanford uh, D school faculty for, um, you know, a bunch of folks at SVB in the innovation areas and stuff, which I thought was super productive. And I watched to see what MIT's data science program is doing. So I would say just it's, it's uh, you have to be a bit of jack of all trades uh, uh, and then deep subject matter expertise on your actual APIs and how you're going to uh, integrate with fintech companies. But um, again, I think it's always changing and it's, uh, you know, again, drawing from different places makes you, uh, rounds your, rounds up your skills. Yeah, 
Thank you very much, Jason, for uh, uh, your talk. Thank you for answering the questions. Uh, I think the, uh, let's say, the UK and European attendees uh, that who waited for your talk uh, until uh, until late afternoon are were, are quite happy. We'd be glad to you invite you, just to tell you, we'd be glad to invite you again to uh, our at least New York conferences on banking. And I loved all your Como and you know all your, uh, you know, you always have a, a specific term like a. You know, COMO, or you always have a. It's like FOMO. If you're missing out, but it's COMO. So yeah, no, yeah. No, you had, you had FOMO, right? For sure. But you had one. I, that I, was I, I, it was COMO, but I, I was thinking FOMO as well because you can miss out on a lot of things. Uh, but yeah, FOMO is another. It's COMO and FOMO, but uh, yeah, uh, just to help you remember stuff. Yeah, yeah, that, that was great. Thank you very much, Jason. Uh, I invite you to uh, and stop sharing your screen so we can have a uh, Simon with us.